On day one, I spawned in as a killer bee, overlooking my entire colony. I watched as all of my people went through the hive, spreading honey and servicing our amazing queen. You, a new killer bee. I think I'll call you Bozo. Just then, our entire beehive began to shake violently. Uh, what's going on? Our hive was burst open and destroyed by a giant killer bear. Oh no. Ah, uh, yes. More of my precious honey. Hibernation is just around the corner, and I will stop at nothing to take it all from you. I watched as my queen bee signaled the others to attack the giant bear. They did their best, but with the bear's brute strength, it was able to swipe most of them out with ease. My people! Bozo, you must take the honey core now. Without it, our colony won't survive. I quickly picked it up and knew that I had to leave if I wanted to save my colony. Oh no, you don't. I flew away with the giant bear sprinting right behind me. On day two, I was being chased by the bear. Because I was still a baby, my wings were very little, making me unable to fly up high. This sucks. Up ahead, I noticed a log lying down, and on it was an opening. Perfect. I have to hide. I flew my tiny wings over and was able to make it inside of the log. Oh, that was close. Am I safe? Just then, the log burst open behind me. Ah! You aren't going anywhere with my honey. Time to run. I started to fly through the log, with the bear destroying it more and more. I then reached the other side, but unfortunately, it was over a cliff. Oh no, I'm done for. Knowing I had no other option, I decided to jump. Ah! On day three, I landed far below. Ah, I was surrounded by a dense jungle, not knowing where I was or where to go. I can't believe my colony. It's gone. That bear is pure evil. I was so angry that I threw the honey core right on the floor. Ah, because of this, it started to glow. What is happening? A tiny honey being then grew from it. Ah. Well, man, it gets crapped in there. Oh, hello. Hi. I see you were chosen to hold on to my core. Here, let me just... The entity then performed a magical spell, which caused me to grow. Whoa. There you go. I've just given you the power of the core. With it, you could do great things, but you must get stronger first. But how? In time, you will see. Go. Find your special flowers. With them, you will grow to be big and strong. Wait, but before I could ask any more questions, the honey being disappeared. Flowers? What flowers? I was about to pick up the honey core, but out of nowhere, I was hit with a bomb. Ow! Is that precious honey? <laughs> On day four, a weird rat bandit picked up my honey core and started to run. Hey, uh, get back here. I tried my best to catch up, but with its swift movements and acrobatics, he was losing me. I can't lose that core. We ran until he was cut off by a large lake. Rats. Hey, who are you and why did you steal my honey? Oh, me? I am Splinter. I was sent to roam throughout these forests to get as much honey as I could for Thorn. Thorn? He must be talking about the bear. That's right. Boss man must hibernate before winter rolls through. And if I help, I'll be right there by his side, eating his scraps. No! Splinter then whistled, which signaled smaller rats to emerge from the bushes of the jungle. Take that little bee out! On day five, the smaller rats charged in and began to attack. They hit me with their tiny paws and bit at me every chance they had. My hearts were getting really low, and I knew there was no way I could take them on. Stay away from me. I began to fly away from them throughout the jungle until I ran into another opening. Far on the other end of it lied a flower much larger than any I had ever seen. Is that what the honey core was talking about? Out of pure urge, I flew towards the flower and decided to pick it up. 
because of this, I gained five hearts and grew in size. Whoa, I feel stronger. And look at my new stinger. There he is. Get him. The rats charged in. But since I was upgraded, I was able to shoot out powerful stinger attacks at will. I was able to take down those rats. Look at me. I did it. Now, time to go make sure my queen is safe. On day six, I was able to make it back to my destroyed colony. I looked around and all I saw was destruction and fire. <coughs> Who is there? Queen, thank goodness you're okay. Our colony, Ozo, it's destroyed. All of our people have abandoned it. That horrible bear. I know, we need to stop him. But first, it's time we build our hive back up. I placed down the flower that I collected and used its pollen to start making a bigger beehive. It's nothing compared to our old place yet, but I know that it will be even better. Whoa, look at you, Fozo. It looks like you found the first of five sacred flowers, the others being the prickly cacti, the burning sunflower, the raging blood tulip, and the underground titan orchid. We can build our colony back up more and more with each one we collect. Well then, I will go and find all of them for our people. Just then, smoke started to emerge from the nearby tree lines. Oh no, a forest fire? I have to go see what's going on. On day seven, I followed the smoke until I reached a spruce forest that was completely on fire. Oh no. My home, my precious lovely wooden paradise. Hey, you, are you okay? No, my ant colony lives in this very forest, but fireflies came through and started burning the entire thing down. Fireflies? What do you mean? Just then, I felt a pinch of heat from behind me. Ow! Behold, the blazing wrath of the fireflies! Oh, they are literal fireflies. The fireflies started to attack. Ah! It shot dangerous fireballs at me, causing me to burn every time that I got hit. I did my best to aim back at it and shoot my new stinger attack, but it had far more experience with its range attacks than I did. No! Quick! Retreat! The ant signaled me to follow him, and I did. We both were able to run through the small cracks of the forest, escaping the firefly. <laughs> Pathetic! You better run! On day eight, the ant took me deep underground inside of its ant hill. I looked around, and even in here, everything was destroyed. Everyone just looked so hurt. And those fireflies are no joke, man. What made them come here? The ant then brought me over to a room that held an empty pedestal. We used to have a really tasty looking cactus and those fireflies came through and burned everything. Luckily, it survived. But then not so luckily, they decided to take it. Wait, did you say a cactus? I need that. Good luck. Those fireflies aren't just gonna give it to you. I mean, look, now all of us ants don't got a home. What if you guys come live with me? I'm trying to build up my own colony and us colonies have to help each other out, right? The ants all seemed excited and agreed. I quickly brought them all out of their base and was stopped by the main ant. I appreciate you helping out. So I'm gonna help you out. The fireflies live in the desert, not too far from here. My guess, if you find them, then you'll find that cactus you're after. On days 9 to 10, I followed the ants' directions deep within the nearby desert. It didn't take long for me to finally come across a large sand castle. There were loads of fireflies flying throughout it. Well, it looks like I found their home. Score! Okay, Fozo, you got this. I began to sneak my way through, knowing if I alerted any of them, I was done for. Hey, Ralph. Are you worried about that killer bear roaming around lately? What? Why would I be? He's hibernating far off in the dark forest miles away. He knows not to come in the desert. Dark forest, huh? Interesting. On days 11 to 12, I made my way higher inside the sandcastle. Okay, I just have to make it to the top. After a few close calls and journeying deep into the Firefly's base, I was finally able to reach the top. 
and in front of me rested the prickly cacti. I did it. I flew over and collected it, which caused my body to change. I gained five hearts and my wings grew to full size. I bet I can fly like a true killer bee now. Before I could do anything though, a group of fireflies flew to the top of the tower. Uh-oh. Hey, he's taking the prickly. Get him. The fireflies rushed in and began shooting their fire attacks at me. Okay, time to test out these new wings. I jumped off the tower and thankfully I could fly up very high now. I started to leave the desert with the fireflies chasing right behind me. Uh, stop it. I can't get hit by one of those things. I have to find a way to escape. Is that a waterfall? Wait a minute. I have an idea. I flew straight through the water stream, leaving the fireflies behind due to their weakness of water. Woohoo! This isn't over, B! On days 13 to 14, I made my way back to the queen and our hive with my amazing new wings. Fozo, this place looks great. But uh, where can we stay? Oh, right. I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, I was able to build these ants their very own anthill on the opposite side of the tree. Perfect. Oh, yeah, this'll do. Thanks. I then placed the prickly cacti down on one of our hills. From it, I began to collect its pollen and used it to further build up our hive. I knew I was going to get bigger, so it had to fit me and our future colony down the line. Fozo, you found another flower, but it's strange. What is? Our people, none of them have come home. Wait. Ozo, do you have the honey core? About that, uh, no, queen, I don't. I'm sorry, it was stolen from me. That's not good. Without that core, the other bees will never find their way back home. I promise, I will get that honey core back before Thorn gets it himself. You have my word. Another forest down, and from it, more tasty treats, honey, berries, and even you. <laughs> this place is taken care of. On to the next. On days 15 to 16, I was out searching for the honey core thief, Splinter. No! No! What was that noise? I started to follow the screams until I spotted a praying mantis crying. Hey, is everything all right? My life, my passion, it's, it's over. Hold on, what do you mean? My guitar, it's gone. I am so confused. You see, I'm a musician. It's my life's work. I had this wonderful, absolutely perfect guitar. Her name was Shirley, but that's when it happened. This evil, evil bear destroyed my forest. And because of it, I left my guitar behind. Who knows where it is now? You must be talking about Thorn. He destroyed my home too. He's heartless. I saw him talking to a stupid looking rat too. Wait, you did? Suddenly, I had an idea. Hey, how about I help you get your guitar back? And in return, you show me where that rat is. You would do that? Yes, of course. I went out searching for the praying mantis's guitar on days 17 to 18. Uh, begotted bing, I stole the garbage with the zing. Wait, is that singing? I followed the noise until I was brought to a small raccoon bandit camp. Hey, give that to me, it's my turn. Tacos, spaghetti, confetti, enchilada. They have the guitar. Hey, give that back. It's not yours! Oh, looky looky, it's a killer bee. Why would we give this thing to you? We're making sound to the heavens over here! No, you're not. You dare disrespect our soothing voices! Without warning, the raccoons started to attack me. They were pretty fast and clawed at me with their little claws. As we were fighting, one of the raccoons accidentally punched a log. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, Ralph! Did, did, did you hear that? Oh, I did, Gerald. That sounded like a drum set. Now that is music. From there, both of the raccoons started to punch the log violently. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Hey, B, you can have this stupid old useless dumb guitar. We got a new instrument now. Yeah, Ralph, we're going to be total rock stars now. Woohoo! 
Yeah, rock stars. Uh, thanks. I left and brought the guitar back over to the praying mantis. Whoa, amazing. I would have never found this on my own. Follow me. I will show you that rat cave. On days 19 to 20, the praying mantis and I split up. It didn't take long until I found the rat's cave. This has to be it. You have betrayed us. We had an alliance with your people, you filthy cheat. What you and Thorn are doing is wrong. You're going to destroy everything at this rate. I have to get that honey core. I ran in and caught Splinter's attention. Ha! We meet again. Splinter charged in, but I was prepared. I fought back. And with my new wings and beasting, I was faster and stronger than ever. How? How did a bee get this much power? The rat wasn't able to keep up with me, and he started to run off. Uh, I'll be back. I was going to follow him, but just then, I noticed the honey core lying on his desk. Yes, I went over and picked it back up. I am never losing you again. Now I could really start to restore our hive. Hey, over here. What did Splinter mean when he said you had an alliance? My king made a deal with Thorn and that rat. They wouldn't bother us as long as we reported on where all the other animals were. That's terrible. Thorn is destroying the entire forest. I know. My king, he's gone completely mad ever since our people found this weird blood flower. Now, that's all they care about. Blood flower? The blood tulip. I'm looking for that. Do you think... But before I could finish my sentence, rumbling filled the cave, quickly followed by a loud... Oh no, is that... You gotta get me out of here, man. On days 22 to 26, I quickly freed the mosquito. Okay, we have to leave this cave without Thorn noticing us. If he does, we're toast. Yeah. Splinter, where are you? You better have called me here for a good reason. While he was distracted, the mosquito and I both flew for it, but were quickly stopped by a dead end. Oh no. Oh, well, isn't this a nice, delicious surprise? I think I remember you. Oh yeah? Does destroying my entire colony ring any bells? You need to stop destroying the forest. You're going to kill everything, and there will be nothing left, even for you. Nothing left? Nothing left? I have had nothing all my life. My own crew of bears, the ones I should trust most, turned their backs on me like an outcast. Why? Because I was too big for hibernation. There wasn't enough food. So what did they do? They abandoned me, leaving me to die in the cold winter. Well, look at me now. I will always have enough now, and no one will stop me. You're a monster. Thorn was angry and started to charge at us. We were no match for him. But luckily, with our small size, we were able to fly above him and out of the cave. I will get you, Fozo, in time. That honey will be mine. <laughs> On days 27 to 29, the mosquito and I were flying fast away from Thorn. Come on, we have to keep flying. The mosquito then just stopped. Hey, what's the matter? I looked around and everything inside the nearby forest was dead. Was this Thorn? If we don't do something about him, the entire forest could turn into this. This place, it used to be beautiful. I remember being here as a kid. Animals of all kinds shared this space in perfect balance. And we all just got along. Then our king found that blood flower and that bear moved in and it's all falling apart. That's horrible. Well, don't worry. We can change things and restore all of it. I sure hope so, B. But I'm not sure if I can fully believe it just yet. At the very least, you taking that flower will help save my people from our king. So I'll take you there if you want. Thank you for having faith in me. Now come on, let's go and fix this. On days 30 to 32, the mosquito brought me to his kingdom. It was in a beautiful, tall red forest, high up in the trees. Wow, this place is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Our king found it for us well, before he turned flower hungry. High up, 
were loads of mosquito guards everywhere. I can see that. How are we gonna get inside? It won't be easy. The flower is in the throne room. We need to be really careful. Come on. I followed the mosquito through his home high in the trees, remaining undetected until we came upon the king's keep. We snuck inside the keep, trying not to be seen. Is that? Far inside the throne room lied the blood tulip. Ah, you. You dare come back after what you've done to your people? I betrayed you. Us mosquitoes are supposed to be allies to the forest. King, it is you that has betrayed your people all because of that flower. You are a coward. Blasphemy! You have come here just to die. On days 33 to 35, the Blood King mosquito flew in and started to attack us. He was much larger than the other mosquitoes and incredibly strong. He shot out very powerful blood at us. Ah! Thanks to the help of my mosquito friend, though, we were able to outmaneuver the king's attacks and counter. You think this is over? The king then signaled lower mosquito guards to enter through the room. Oh no. With their combined forces, the battle was a lot harder. But the both of us knew what we were fighting for. And with one final hit, we were able to take the king down. No! The king's crown was dropped, and Mose went to pick it up. Hey, look at you. Because of this, the guards looked confused and stopped attacking. Whoa, they must have just been following orders. Now my people can finally rest easy knowing that they're free. Thanks, Fozo, for everything. Of course, we're in this together. I then went over to the blood tulip and grabbed it. Because of this, I gained five more hearts and my chest started to feel weird. I now could shoot out hot honey at will. Awesome. You know, Fozo, I think this place has too much history with our king. Is it okay if I go home with you and start my own kingdom? Of course. Of course. On days 36 to 39, I arrived back at base with my new mosquito friends. I built them up their very own tall tree colony so that they could truly call this place their home. Wow, this place looks great, Fozo. I can't wait to grow this place up for my people. Of course. It feels good that two different colonies could team up for the greater good. Speaking of colonies, I placed the blood tulip down, which strengthened the hive. From there, I collected its pollen and used the resources to build up the beehive even more. It's closer and closer to being complete. My little bee, just look at you. Did you find that honey core? I sure did. The queen was excited and brought us inside the hive. From there, we placed the honey core on a pedestal. Just as the core got placed, a large signal burst out from the hive. What was that? Then I heard the sound of buzzing. Wait, bees? My fellow bees started flying back from the forest and coming home. All right. Our queen. With the core back in place, our colony can finally find their way back home. Hopefully with more flowers, I can make the hive even stronger than it was before. Great work, Fozo. Now come with me. I need to show you something. On days 40 to 44, the queen brought me to a clearing out of our colony forest. Hey, where are you taking me? You see that cloud far off in the distance? I looked up far off into the distance. Yeah? What are we looking at? Well, that is where the next flower is, the burning sunflower. That's great. We are going to be back up to full force in no time. Not so fast. That cloud's height is past the flight limitations of just a regular bee. If you try to fly up there as you are now, you won't be able to sustain the strong gust of wind. And you, well, will die. OK, noted. Don't worry, Fozo. <laughs> Yeah, so you see, there's been said long ago in ancient bee history to have existed a special type of nectar. Nectar, huh? Precisely. Otherwise known as the lost ancient nectar. However, many believe it's a myth, but not me. If a bee were to find it and pour it throughout his wings, well, it would amplify their flying skills by a wide margin. 
Huh, very well. Now, how do I find it? On days 45 to 47, I followed my fellow B until he led me straight to an ancient temple. Well, I think this might be the place, Bozo, but no one knows how to get inside. I guess it's time I figure that out myself. I left the bee and flew straight to the main entryway. But just like the bee said, it was locked. After trying to mine the blocks, I realized I needed to find another way in. I kept searching until I found a weird looking pattern of honeycomb targets on the wall. Here goes nothing. Using my new honey shot ability, I tried to shoot at one of the targets, but missed by a long shot. I guess I need some practice. You must use your heightened senses as a bee, Fozo. That's the only way. You're right. I concentrated and listened to my new friend. Come on, Fozo. Heighten your senses. I shot my honey shot and it was a direct hit. Two more times and the door finally opened. I did it. Let's hope this nectar is worth it. I wandered throughout the temple when I finally stumbled upon an opening. Right in front of me was a large nectar oasis. On days 48 to 52, I walked into the oasis. I was about to dip my wings inside of it when I heard a skittering sound coming from behind me. You stupid idiot bee! What? How did you get in here? I have been following you for days! Do you have any idea how bad you made me look to Thorn? Why should I care? How could you even work for someone like him? Does it matter? I am gonna defeat you here and bring him your head! Then I will finally get his approval! Splinter was about to charge in, but was quickly cut off by a loud crashing sound. Out of nowhere, Thorn was there himself. You've gotta be kidding me! Uh, Thorn, what are you doing here? I wasn't gonna let you fail me again, you useless rat! I came here to end this myself! But, but I, I wasn't going to disappoint you this time! Silence! Now, I'm going to take this bee down and end this mutiny! Thorn started to charge in! Oh no! I knew I had to fight back with everything I had! But I quickly realized that my newly found upgrades just weren't enough! He ran at me with his brute strength and swatted me! Ah! I was hit down into the nectar and my body started to feel strong. Strange. I started to become stronger, causing my wings to change into full nectar wings. Using the power of the nectar, I shot straight up through the spire of the temple. On days 53 to 56, I shot up right in the center of the sky. Whoa, I have never been this high up. Watch it, you idiot. Uh, sorry. Because of the bird, I was turned around. And is that? It is. The cloud that the queen showed me. I started to fly over to it. These nectar wings are something else. Woohoo! I finally arrived at the cloud and was shocked to see a civilization of wasps. What's a killer bee doing up this high? How did you get up here? It's a long story. Look, I'm here for the sunflower. Oh, well then, uh, I'm sorry. You're out of luck, pal. What? No, I came all this way. It must be here. Ah, uh, follow me. The sky wasp took me to another room of their kingdom. And sitting there was the sunflower, but it didn't look so good. Hey, what's wrong with it? Some ship came by a couple days ago and took our sunflower seeds. Without them, our precious flower is dying. I will go out and find them. If I'm able to bring them back, can we make a deal? I need this flower. You're one ambitious bee. I'll think about it. Now go. On days 57 to 59, I started flying off to the north in search of the sunflower seeds. When out of nowhere, I spotted an airship. Huh, that seems worth checking out. I approached it and saw penguins? What? They said it wasn't possible. They said us fatties could never fly. Well, look who's flying now. <laughs> As I got closer, I could see that the penguins were using the sunflower seeds to power up their ship. Whoa, time to sneak on board and grab what is mine. I flew in unnoticed and made my way over to the seeds. Yes, I got them. 
or no? What's happening? Brace yourselves! We're going down! Why is this happening? I have literally no idea! Ah! Knowing I had to think fast, I used my new hot honey ability and shot it at the ship's generator. This caused the fuel to fill up again, and the ship started to stabilize. Ah! <coughs> Must have been a malfunction or something. <clears throat> Anyways. Phew! That was close. Okay, time to get out of here. I returned to the Sky Wasp Society on days 60 to 63. From there, I brought the sunflower seeds back to the guard who was waiting for me. Here you go. Wow, you really found them? Oh, this is perfect. The guard walked over and put them back in the sunflower, and it immediately began to transform. The sunflower was now back to its full glory. You know what, B? Without you, this wouldn't have been possible. Go ahead, take the sunflower. Only if you promise to take care of it. Of course I will. Thanks. I grabbed the newly transformed sunflower and began to upgrade. I gained five more hearts and grew larger in size. Because of this, I also got a really cool honey grab ability that came straight from the ground. This is sick. Thank you, Sky Wasp. You have no idea how much I appreciate this. On day 64 to 68, I got back to base and immediately placed the sunflower down. With the additional pollen, my fellow bees and I went to work and started to build up our beehive even more. Inside of it, I made sure to add some sleeping quarters for my other bees to stay in. Awesome! Because of this, I noticed even more bees starting to come in from the tree lines. With the bees coming back and the improved hive, it was really looking like we had a chance against Thorn. Fozo, the colony, my goodness, it's almost complete. You've done very well. Just one more flower and we may be able to stand up to that bear and stop his destruction. Thorn is going to regret ever coming to this forest. Just then, I noticed that there were some hummingbirds entering our base. Yeah, this place will be great. Don't you think it'll be great? Yeah, I think it'll be great. What are they doing here? Uh, there's been a lot of commotion going on away from camp. And it's pushing some of the other animals over here. Could be worth checking out. Huh, you know, you might be right. On days 69 to 73, I followed the trail of critters throughout the jungle. It didn't take long for me to finally reach a really damaged village. What is going on here? Not my home. <laughs> oh, this sucks. It sucks so bad, man. I looked around and all of the villagers' houses were destroyed. Just then, I heard a cry that was much different than the others. <laughs> I walked inside of a house to see a villager who was alone and sad. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Just then, the villager used the potion of magic and revealed himself to actually be a witch. Oh, this was too easy. Then something really hard hit me in the back and I began to pass out. On day 74 to 77, I woke up to the sound of snarling? What is going on? Ah, you stupid bee! Now, I get my revenge! I am going to savor this moment! Just remember, the swamp is off limits! Yeah, yeah, get lost! So what, this is it? It seems that way! Fozo, you did all of this just to fail. You are only an insect after all. It looks like I win. Yeah, we win. Shut up, you rat. I had to do all of this myself because you are such a failure. What? I have been helping you this whole time. I, I swear. Help? <laughs> you think you were helping me? You think you're anywhere near useful as me? Yeah, I thought we were friends. Shut it! You have done nothing. You really thought I was going to give you my scraps. You really thought I would share? I was just keeping you close for one last treat before I hibernate. What? You are going to eat me? That's enough! 
Time to finish off this bee! Thorn started to turn to me, and I thought that I was done for. Then, right before he took me out, Thorn screamed in pain. An explosion happened, caused by Splinter? Leave him alone, you monster! He then shot another one, which opened my cage. Thorn turned around and swatted at him. You traitor! Arrgh! In the commotion, I had just enough time to fly out of the hole. Come on, Splinter! We have to go! Now! On day 78 to 80, the rat and I ran far away through the trees. We heard rustling off behind us, and I knew that Thorn was searching. We have to keep going! <coughs> Stop! Stop! What? We can't! We have to go! No, you have to go! Listen, it's up to you now, Fozo. Don't talk like that. Come on, you can make it. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to feel needed, Fozo. No one has ever wanted me my entire life. Who'd want a rat? <laughs> I just thought if I joined Thorn, I would be powerful. But <clears throat> oh, he was just using me all along. Splinter, we can do this together. We can take him down. No, I'm, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to make up for any of this. Please, just don't take it out on us, rats. We just wanted to feel needed. Splinter? Splinter! No! I was extremely sad, but was interrupted by more leaves moving throughout the woods. Oh no. Thorn? Just as I thought I was done for, smaller rats emerged from the forest. I could tell that they were extremely sad, and they knew so was I. The rats then started to walk in a direction, and I felt as if they were signaling me. I followed them to see what they were trying to show me. On days 81 to 85, I followed the rats until we reached a creepy looking cave entrance. Uh, where did you guys lead me? This place holds the Titan flower. Tonight is the only night it will bloom until a whole year. So you better hurry. Right. I did as the rat said and entered throughout the doorway. Hello? I walked throughout the lush cave tunnels until I reached an underground opening, but there was nothing inside. Just then, the moon started to reveal itself through the clouds, causing the entire cave to shake. What's going on? A flower much larger than the others sprouted in the center of it. Awesome. I went to go pick it up. But to my surprise, it started to attack me? What the? This flower is hostile? On days 86 to 90, the flower started to attack. Ah! It shot out very powerful poisonous attacks at me. And I knew that I had to avoid them. I kept shooting at it with my honey blast, which caused it to shoot out very dangerous vines from underneath me. Uh, get away! I knew what I was fighting for, and because of this, I couldn't give up. I used everything I had on the flower, which finally caused its defeat. Ha! I did it! I went over and picked up the flower, which caused me to fully upgrade, making me grow larger bee antlers. I gained five more hearts and now had a very powerful honey trap ability. I could now trap and explode my enemies with ease. With this, I think I'm finally ready to take on Thorn. On days 91 to 94, I arrived back at my hive with the rats. I immediately went went over and built Splinter up his very own memorial site. I know he started off evil, but he truly did make it up. You did the right thing, Splinter. You were a hero. Truly a hero. All of us rats will always remember you, Splinter. Hey, Bozo, thanks for giving us a home. Yeah. We haven't had one of these places before. Of course. I went out and got the right amount of materials to build the rats their very own houses. There you go. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is amazing. It's even better than cheese. From there, I went over and placed the final flower. Because of this, my fellow bees and I went to work by fully building up our new beehive. With all of us working together, we were able to finally finish it up. Wow, just look at it. It's finally complete. Bozo, I don't know how we could have done this without you. You are truly the savior to our people. Not yet, I'm not. I think it's time we take down this bear together.
together. On days 95 to 99, I gathered all of my friends and fellow bees around the base. What's going on? I don't know, man. Just listen. I'm trying to pay attention. Thank you all for listening to me today. A while ago, our homes were raided and destroyed by Thorn. But look at how far we've come to truly turn things around. While our home may be safe, others are still in jeopardy. I think it is up to all of us to make things right by taking him down. Yeah, agreed. Oh, yeah. Just as I was about to leave with the insects, a large explosion interrupted us. It was Thorn himself. I heard you've been making more honey. I'll be taking that now. On day 100, my fellow bees and I all charged in together. Bring it. I watched as Moe's flew through the skies and attacked him whenever he could. The ants took the floor below him and started to bite at his feet. And the rats did what they could to hurt him as well. I have worked way too hard for this, for all of it. And I won't let you puny insects take it away from me. My fellow bees then flew in as well and started to attack. He countered everyone with his brute strength and even took down a few of my friends. Oh no, he's still too strong. Hey, you wanna fight someone? Fight me. With pleasure. Thorn then turned his attention straight to me and began to charge in. I used all of my newly acquired abilities and managed to really stun him. He was easily my toughest opponent yet, but I thought of everyone that was counting on me. I have to win. I have to. I hit Thorn harder and harder until finally he was starting to grow weak. No, no! Thorn was finally defeated. And now the forest and the animals inside of it could live in peace.